While Doug is getting the slide presentation set up, I will just say it is a blessing to be here. Uh, I figured it up, we were here 44 years ago. Now, all of you all are too young. Now, Miss Marie remembers when we were here uh, with the Gospel Continental's evangelistic team. We traveled and sang from coast to coast in the United States, and so we finally gave up the gypsy life and settled down. And, uh, but God has been good to us and has blessed us so much. Never in our wildest dreams 44 years ago when we were here in uh, Artesia did we think that we would be missionaries on the other side of the world and the Philippines in our future, but God had a plan. And we're thankful that he has allowed us to serve him as missionaries there now for 11 years. And uh, we're home for the summer. Uh, so here we go. We're going to let you see our campus right now. This is some of our students at the front gate. As you walk into the campus, if you look over to the right, you'll see a, a new building that, that we've just completed. It is the Darlene Carey Christian Academy. Uh, this is the building that uh, the WMA, and I'm sure that your WMA is, uh, uh, has, uh, has helped uh, provide the funds for that. And uh, we have 80 some odd students there now. And uh, we, go, we only go to the sixth grade. We go to the seventh grade this year and then we will add one grade each year uh, after that. This is our admin building where uh, our office is here and we have classrooms, a library, all of that is, in, is housed in this building. We also have a girls dorm and a boys dorm and I forgot to take pictures. We don't get pictures of the boys dorm and the girls dorm, but you know, this is some of, the, some of our classrooms that we, uh, that, uh, we have. Uh, the students are studying. I don't know whose class this is. Probably Diane's. And, and they love to have pictures made. So what, if somebody walks in with a camera, everybody just runs right. <laughs> we they have, love picture taking. We have 62 students uh, in the enrolled in the Bible College. Uh, most of them are there. The young men are there to get a bachelor in theology. Uh, they're there with they. To be, they want to be missionaries. It's 72. 72, I'm sorry. 72 missionaries and then the young ladies come to study in the music or Christian education. They come to the Bible College and all their belongings are in a little plastic bag. They're very poor, but they have a calling on their hearts. And that's why they're there. And so that's why when we're home, we try to raise funds through the scholarship program. And if you would be interested in supporting one of our students, we have about 20 new students coming in August, and for $100 a month, you can be their sponsor. And we can tell you more about that later if you're interested in it. Uh, but $100 a month pays their tuition, their food, uh, all of their uh, things that they need while they're there at the Bible College. And we can also give you a picture of your student, and we can stay in touch and give you updates on that student. We, we just recently became, became certified through the government, through the state, uh, as a recognizable college. So all of our students now, when they graduate from, from, uh, by, from the Bible College, they, they have a, a degree that is recognized by the government so they can, they can teach anywhere or uh, you know, whatever their, whatever their uh, degree is in, they can, can work in that degree. That was our college choir you saw just before that. That's the one that has, we had 62 in the college choir. <laughs> so if you got 72 students and you got 62, that means there's only 10 out there that's not in the choir. So. They love to sing. <laughs> and, they, and they love to paint. This is a, one of the, a, a nasty wall that we had in, in the campus. And I said, let's make that, let's brighten that up a little bit. So they decided to do a mural from the birth of Christ all the way to the end. Uh, and there's different different things in, in, in the history of Christ. This is, and this is, this is an abstract tomb. I, I, I call it abstract because 
it really doesn't look like a tomb, but that's what their uh, their uh, artistic ability uh, shows. This is our graduates for this year. We graduated 16, 13 young men got their degree in theology with either a pastoral or a mission emphasis. Then we had three young ladies that got their degree in Christian education that will go on to teach. I'm proud of this young man. He was my oldest, he was our oldest student, 35 years old, and he graduated. Amen. So he graduated with a, a degree in theology. And he'll be working in his church. This young man uh, has recently surrendered to be a missionary in one of the areas. Uh, we're, we're really proud. We're, we now opened a department, a new department. We want, we want a placement department for a placement for all of our graduating students. So we don't want them just to just go to the college and then go out and do something else. We want them working in the ministry field. And these four, uh, they just got their master's degree from from They're the college. They're part of our faculty. They're part of our faculty, and it, <clears throat> under under the government, in order to teach a, a, a bachelor's degree, you have to have one degree higher. So they got their degree, and we, we partnered with uh, Jacksonville Seminary, and uh, they got their degree there. This is Doug's book that he wrote recently from his dissertation for his PhD. It talks about loss of shame, the new norm in society. And as you all know right now, with the woke movement and the cancel uh, culture that we're living in in the U.S., this book is really timely. And so it's $18 if you see me if you'd like to buy one. But um, it, it's really an interesting book. And all the money goes to our ministry funds from that book. These are, these are scenes. We just throw some scenes in there. This, of course, this is a river. And we have missions on the other side of that river. And until that river goes down underneath there, is a bridge somewhere, <laughs> but uh, we we I don't dare cross it. And then there's lots of times that we have to go down a river bed even to get to the mountains. So uh, that's uh, when, when, especially in the the rainy season. And this is this is like 90 miles of bad road. You know, you've heard that statement. Uh, this is this is one of the roads. That's the reason we have to uh, we have to uh, do motorbikes or whatever or, or get out and walk through the mud. <laughs> or get out and walk. <clears throat> this is Doug's old army jeep. This helps us get to a lot of the mountainous places. Uh, and so some places we can't get through, like the place you saw earlier. But this we can go a lot of places in it. And some of the Filipinos have called him General MacArthur. <laughs> when he's in his army jeep. This is another mode of transportation that they have. It's a, there's a, a, a motorbike on the other side, and they took these little cars on there, and they use those for transportation. Uh, they can take those from uh, people who will rent them, and they, they go from one place to the other. In order for us to get from one island to the other, we, we can't take a slow boat. We have to take a fast craft, and that is a fast craft. Uh, and this is not my plane. <laughs> okay, just for your information, we have to take airplanes. Sometimes we have to go, we have to go air to get to get to from one place to the other, but from one island to the other. But we wanted you to have some scenes of uh, of the uh, some of the country. Incidentally, the Philippines is made up of seven thousand one hundred islands. So we are an island nation. Doug and I were invited to go down to Mindanao, which is the southernmost island in the Philippines, to do a seminar. Um, Doug taught the pastor's wives, and I taught, uh, Doug taught the pastors, I taught the pastor's wives. And so we were thankful for that opportunity. This island is mostly Muslim, but we do have some very strong BMA churches in that area. And a lot of the pastors, they were new to the ministry. And uh, this young man here, he wanted to be a missionary. Well, he did not sit around and say, well, I don't have the money to do it. He has a trike, and so he uses it to transport people around to do the best he could. But we are now supporting him. These two young men on this side was also at the seminar, and they are from up at the tribal villages. 
they had never seen an American before. A white skin. <laughs> With white skin, yes. They'd seen them in movies, but not a real American. So uh, we had a really good time visiting with them. And I know you ladies love flowers. Okay. So we have flowers everywhere. This young man over here in that area there, uh, he, he's a graduate of the Bible College. And we, we just happen, you know, it's strange how God works in, in mysterious ways. God puts you where he wants you at a certain time, and then he does somebody else. So we, we, we were in a, a shopping mall on another island, and we met Albert. Albert, what are you doing? Well, I'm, I'm a delivery boy, but I really want to get back into the ministry. I said, well, we have a church that needs a pastor. Would you be willing to go? And he said, I'll go wherever. And it was up in the mountains. So uh, Albert went up, and, and, and they, they loved him. And so we ordained him. And now, and this is his congregation. Amen. Doing an excellent job. Doing a great job there. Oh, now, this one right here, if you notice, he is in his native costume. Uh, he is a, he's a tribal, he's one of the tribal guys. And uh, he's also a pastor and also a graduate from the Bible College. Uh, he, that was his ordination service because now we're organizing the church. And if you notice, he did change clothes for the church organization. <laughs> uh, but he wanted to be ordained in his native costume. And so that was that we, we let him do that. And God provided a building for, him, for them in, their, uh, in the, in the uh, tribal area. It's the Ate tribe, and yeah, the God provided that building, and uh, and they're just they're doing a marvelous work there. You see the apples? Well, we take them for granted here in the States, don't we? Uh, but last Christmas, we got word that some of the children up in the tribal villages, up in the mountain, there's four villages up there where Pastor Joel Francisco pastors. He's the guy that, that had... <laughs> Didn't have on no clothes. Yeah. <laughs> but we took apples and candy up to them for Christmas. 400 children. And the amazing thing is about these children had never eaten an apple before, or never tasted an apple before. So it was really a big treat for them. And another thing, you know, missionaries get very lonesome and homesick around Christmas all the time, usually, but around Christmas it's the worst. Because we want to be home with our grandchildren and our families. And so the very first few Christmases I was there, uh, it almost made me depressed. And I said, you know, Diane, you just got to get over it. Start thinking about yourself and think about someone else. So I started thinking about the children there. And so we started a tradition of doing Christmas bags at the mission points where we have missionaries and then also up in the tribal area. So the young people at the Bible College helped me put the bags together and helped me get them delivered. And we delivered between 150 to 200 of these to the children at the mission point. Uh, some of them, that may be the only Christmas that they probably get. And but it's such a joy to us to be able to do it for the children. And usually we put school supplies in the bags, a toy, and sometimes a clothing item, if we can get the right sizes and everything from the pastors. Yeah, our tribal people there are, are considered one of the groups of people that are, we, we call them the forgotten people. Uh, there's just a lot of things happen down in the, in the metropolitan areas, in the big <coughs> cities, uh, where they have, they have an abundance, a lot of times an abundance of supplies. But up in the tribal people, they don't. If you notice this picture here, and if you can see down in the valley there how far that is, that is where all the trash and all the garbage from Manila goes. It's brought into that valley, and, and then people go through it, and they find stuff that they think they may can sell to, to, to provide for their families. And up on top of the mountain there where we were taking the picture, uh, there's a mission point, and there, there you can see that uh, with the picture there. Somebody's provided a nice building for them, but they have no running water and no electricity. 
Everything has to be brought up the mountain. But they bring all of this stuff up, and then they go through this stuff and try to find stuff for their, like I say, that they can, can sell uh, to provide for their families. And uh, it, that, that is a mission point. That's one of the, one of the mission points that we were, we're trying to get a pastor there. The, the, see the old man in the middle there? He was going through all of his little trash that he had, that he had gathered up and to try to find something. And I got to looking at that and I said, you know, this is sad. These people have no hope. They have no hope for even ever being better than what they are right now. And then my mind kept wandering on and on. And I thought, you know, they have no hope here on earth. But if we don't win them to the Lord, they have no hope in eternity. And that is the sad part. That is the really, really sad part. When somebody has no hope of ever getting out and being better than what they are right now. And that is what that is one of our missions. That's the reason we're missionaries. That's the reason we go from one place to the other. That's the reason that we that we uh, don't uh, that, that we leave our families here and we go and do those things is because that we want those people to have the same hope that we have. We're blessed this morning. A young lady that we met many years ago. Uh, did you go to Bible college? She went to Bible college. Okay. She is Filipino. Uh, and we knew her before she knew him. Okay. <laughs> and so she was a missionary in Cambodia. And Lao, I'm sorry. Okay, excuse me. They're right next. Okay, but it's amazing to me that that we send Americans send missionaries to the Philippines, and now the Philippines are sending missionaries to other countries. Amen. Isn't that great? And so I've asked Joy. Her name is Joy, and I forget. Uh, Joy Quail. Mrs. Yes, Quail. I asked. I've asked her if she would come and speak to you for just about. Uh, about five minutes, maybe something about missions, uh, because she yeah. was she was a missionary. She was one of our missionaries and one of our one of our kids. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Introduce your son and your husband. Yeah, Hi, everybody. <clears throat> my name is Joy. I'm from the Philippines, and that's my husband John and our son Lucas. We live in Alamogordo, uh, just about two hours away from here. And uh, wow, I, I think I met Brother Doug and Diane back in 2010, and yeah, then a long time. A long time. <laughs> they were not yet. Um, from, uh, they have not moved to the Philippines yet at that time, but um, I I remember uh, just being amazed to see how you know they were willing to leave this country and go to my country. At that time, I, I didn't even know uh, what God had planned for me. But I just, as I continued to seek for His will um, through our missionaries there and the Bible college where they were working, uh, God called me to uh, serve Him in Laos. So the Bible college had sent missionaries to Cambodia, to Thailand, mm -hmm. to Hong Kong. So um, the Lord has really blessed that college and when I was there there was a lot that needed to be done at the school <laughs> and brother Doug and Miss Diane labored with our Filipino staff to get it to um, certifi certified with a, a higher education and so now they're able to um, issue diplomas that will, will allow the college graduates to to be employed in other schools and and some of them, I believe, are called to serve as missionaries yes. um, in Southeast Asia too, or even beyond. So last time I, I, I saw Brother Doug, Doug and Miss Diane, I think it was 2016 at a conference. <laughs> yes. Oh, it feels yes. like it was yesterday, but it was seven years ago. And it's amazing to see how the Lord has been using them, has been using the school, and then our other American missionaries there just kind of uh, the the extra support 
that the Filipino workers need to, to get them where the Lord wants them to be. And it's amazing to see them go to places where I haven't even been to. Uh, when I see pictures on Facebook, oh, sorry, am I too close? Okay. Um, they, they go to places that are hard to reach. They, they, they don't have, uh, some of them don't have access roads. Mm -hmm. They have to, they have to, I think there are some areas where you needed to get on a boat, right? And it, I was thinking, I wonder if the families know <laughs> the dangers that they have to, to go through to get to where the Lord wants them to be. You know, it's amazing. And, and I, I continue to um, pray for them and pray for the ministry there. There's a lot to be done. And uh, I'm so grateful that the Lord blessed them with willing hearts to be where he wants them to be and use them mightily. And, and it's amazing. I know that. Greater things are still ahead. So Amen. it's good to see you Thank both. You it's so good much. to be here. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> I know that was a long way for the, you to drive, but yeah. we deeply appreciate you They, they drove you two that. hours just to see us. <laughs> I didn't know anybody loved us that much. I didn't either. <laughs> no, well, I knew that, we knew that Joy was, uh, and her husband lived in, in Almogorda, so when we knew that we were coming here, we notified her, and she says, we want to come. And uh, so I'm so glad that they did. Yeah. Uh, now, just a few, uh, for just a few minutes here, I'm going to ask for if you have any questions that you want us to answer about the ministry. If there's not anything that's off the books, we're open uh, financially. We're open that way. If you want to know anything about any of the ministry, you ask. I don't know how to put this. Do you have problems with the IRS or anything like that? No. Thank God. No. No, we don't. One of the things that we do, though, if my family knew sometimes some of the places that, that we had to go, like on the island of Mindanao, which is, which is a, one of the islands that is predominantly Muslim, uh, there's places there that the only way I will go is, is I have to have a bodyguard. And uh, that's kind of scary sometimes. My wife, I won't even let her go to those areas, but uh, but we do we uh, we we make those make those trips too because those people need the Lord. Now don't be bashful. I know that I have met some of you already, and I know that you're not bashful. Okay. I know in times past they had some issues with uh, communist rebels. Uh -huh. Uh, one missionary, I think, uh, I, I can't remember his name right now. But anyhow, he had led one of the rebels to Christ. But did, do y'all have any contact? We do. We have, uh, we have, but we don't. As, as white people, we don't. But our Philippine counterparts do. Uh, we, what we do there is we like to train them. We've learned over years that you get most, you get, in other words, I'm going to use an American uh, slang kind of uh, statement here. You get, you get a bigger bang for your buck. Uh, if we train missionaries in, in their native lands, in their native country, to reach their own people, they, they're, it's a lot more effective than it is if, if we go in and try to do that. And so the only reason that I go in those places is because I go with a Filipino that is working in the area, and I go there to encourage them and, and to, to see their needs, if they have any needs or anything that we can help them with. Uh, we, uh, some of our students, as a matter of fact, four of our young men that graduated this year, no, five of our young men that graduated this year are from, the, from tribal from Mindanao, from the Muslim areas, uh, and and then also from uh, Mindora, uh, so they they uh, come to Bible college, and so they go back and they'll do their uh, they'll do their mission work in within uh, you know within the, the areas that they they were living in. I know you had some issues with bathrooms. With what? Oh. I remember the picture that 
Yes, ma'am. Oh, so you got a vivid picture of the yeah. CR. Well, we don't call them bathrooms because in the Philippines, if you say bathroom, that, that means that they're gonna, they, they think that you want to go get a bath. Okay, we call them CRs. Okay, yeah. comfort rooms. Comfort rooms. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yes, the WMA was very good yes. in helping us to update the comfort rooms at the Bible College and this sort of thing. So mm -hmm. that's something that we Americans take for granted, I guess. But um, so y'all were able to resolve. Oh, we fixed all of that. Oh yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We've done a lot of maintenance on the Bible College campus. We replace roofs, we replace screens. Being right on the ocean, screens don't last very long. Yeah. They rust out and uh, dry rot. So um, God has blessed us through people and churches just like you all uh, contributing. We have been able to repair and do a lot of maintenance. And while we're here, I just want to thank this church for your monthly support. This ministry is our ministry. It's your ministry because of your financial uh, support every month. It helps us to be able to do what we do there. Yeah, there's no way that we could be there without you. And you say, well, you, you may say, and I, I don't know exactly what your offering is or what your contribution is, but no contribution is too small. Uh, we, we, pardon? <laughs> pardon? Say that's good because most of the time ours is pretty small. Well, that doesn't okay. make any difference. We're here, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, as much as God because is. anybody that supports our ministry, whatever it may be, it's not our ministry. It is our ministry. Okay. It's not Doug and Diane's ministry. You're what we do there will live on through things that you have done and provided for us. And we and we're we're just so thankful. If we don't. We don't judge wherever we go. We don't judge the size of the building or the number of people that are in the congregation. Uh, great or small, it's wonderful. It's just great to be with God's people. That's the main thing. Well, I've just about talked your, you guys' uh, ears off, but one thing that I, I would like for you to tell the congregation is about the COVID issue over there. Uh, you were telling me that... Uh, that government restricted people to, and made them stay in their house and only one permit for somebody to get out. And we think we had it bad, but tell them Well, that. we, in, in our area, um, on the island of Negros, uh, in Bacolod City and Felicia, the only way we could go out is at one time, uh, every that you were issued a permit, one permit per household. And then the only way we could go out is you had to have that permit. And if you if you drove past, if you were driving and you drove past a checkpoint, you had to show that permit. Now, here's the good part about Doug and Diane. My I put my 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 my, uh, my pass was in the name of Elwin Lee, and they didn't know if it was a boy or a girl. So they and so she she went and I went. <laughs> But yes, we had, it was very, they were very strict. We were not allowed to go, we were, we were not allowed to, to conjugate in groups. Uh, we had to maintain distances and, you know, and they were very strict about that. Uh, at, at Bible College, because, because we have a girl's dorm and a boy's dorm and they all live together, uh, we said, well, you know, this is like a family. So we're going to have school. And so we, we were very careful that we didn't advertise it, but we, we did have classes uh, during that time because the students were on campus. They had nothing to do but study. So that was what we hoped. They play basketball. They play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but anyhow, so we did that, and we did online classes too so yeah. that we could keep going. Is basketball a favorite sport? Oh, oh yes, basketball is our favorite sport. Joyce is shaking her head. She knows about that. Basketball and boxing. <laughs> basketball and boxing. We don't allow boxing. No. <laughs> but every once in a while, we'll have boys that will we'll try it out. Okay. <laughs> and you had a question? Um, how many teachers do you currently have? We now have on staff, we now have uh, my whole staff with teachers and uh, and staff faculty, faculty and, and staff faculty. is about 17. 
but the girl, the, the girls in my office, they they would they're, they're part of the staff or faculty also. They they teach. Uh, just college students, is that all that y'all teach? That's us. Now, we have the academy, which we just started three years ago. Uh, it's there now. And the academy was, we put the, the academy together because knowing that one day it would be very inexpensive, it would be very expensive. Filipinos could not afford to keep the Bible college. Uh, and so we, we know that uh, we have people that will pay for their children to go to a good school. And so that the, the academy, the Christian academy will pay one, once we get 12 grades, it will pay one third of my budget. Okay. And for Bible college, because it is a, it, it, that is a, a uh, it's a nonprofit, but it is, it is something that we can charge for. And I can't. We can't charge. We we don't, we can't, we can't charge our students to come and study Bible. Well, yeah, we do, but they don't. We, we charge them, but you know it's written off at the end of the year if they don't have scholarship. So that's the reason we do scholarships. Yeah. Anything else? We want to answer all your questions. Have y'all got up to date? Uh, we have, we do. We have a computer room. Uh, it, we run, I think we have 12 computers in that room. Uh, that was one of, that's one of our requirements as far as the government's concerned. We have to have those facilities. And yes, we do. I knew y'all had some old ones at one time. We did, and we, we we desktops. we've had to, we've had to replace them. We replace them as they go out. You know how computers are. Uh, you buy a computer today, and before you get home, it's it's only worth about half of what you paid for it, because there's a new one coming out tomorrow. But yes, we do, and we have a very good library. Uh, one of the hardest situations was to have a a, a library person in the library because a li our librarian has to have a master's degree, and it's very hard in the Philippines to find a librarian that has a master's degree. We found a lady that was retired, and we use her credentials uh, for for our school library. We now, and we also send we're sending a student uh, to to get her degree in library science. Okay. Any, anything else? Diane, you forgot to tell us what you did mm -hmm. at Bible College. What do I do? Uh -huh. I teach music, I teach piano, and I hymnology, and I teach English <laughs> and communications. Sometimes it's whatever they need me to teach, then that's what I teach. <laughs> and you talk about exciting is when, when I have a class with her, or, or she's in one of my classes, and she's an English teacher, and boy do I get it when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. I want to share a little... Some of the scriptures with you. <coughs> How many of you remember many years ago? Hand me that word, Diane. <coughs> there was a show on TV called Mission Impossible. You remember it. I know every one of you are old enough to know that. Okay. They also had a movie by that name. Well, you know, they was, there was this group that went around the world, and they would go to places where people were having troubles, and they would, they would try to get the troubles worked out. Well, you know, we are a mission impossible. We are a mission possible. It's possible. We can do all things through Christ which strengthened us. So remember, then I told my students, I told the students one day, we were at chapel, and I said, you know, you are the mission force for this country. You are the mission force for your community. You are the mission force for this city. 
And then I got to looking at the word force. What does the word force mean? The word force means that, uh, let's see, it's strength and energy that you're going to proceed with something. You're going to proceed to a mission. You're going to accomplish the mission. So I broke this out into force. L, what does F stand for? When you're going to go out and witness to somebody, what is it? What does F stand for? It stands for faith. That your works are not going to be just thrown out there. You have faith that God is going to use what you are, what you're talking about. You have the, are witnessing to or, or whatever, or God, but that God will reap, reap the rewards, not us. It's us. All He asks us to do is have faith. So number one is enforce. The word is F. Faith. Now remember those now, okay? Because I'm going to ask you what they are. Faith. Next one is obedience. Oh, obedience. You have to be obedient to the Word of God. You have to be obedient to what God wants you to do. You know, we can... Uh, Diane and I could have sat at home in Mississippi and not been obedient to be where we're supposed to be. It's not that we're impossible. It's not that we cannot be replaced. But God calls, and we answer. We were obedient to the call. I'm, I'm, I feared so many times that people are called to missions, are called to do work for the Lord, and they're, they're not obedient. They're not obedient to His Word. So, the first one was what? Faith. 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 The second one? Obedience. Obedience. What's the third one? Rejection. How many of you have ever been in sales? Okay, you know that if you're in sales, you don't close every deal. Okay? You get rejected. You get rejected. And even when you go, if you go down the street knocking on doors, trying to tell people about the Lord, you're going to have people that's going to slam the door in your face. Amen. We're going to have rejections. It, it, this is not anything new. The apostles had rejections also. So it's gone. It's been forever. We're all, we all run into those things, rejections. And in Deuteronomy 31 and 8, it says, And the Lord, he it, is that he, he it is that doeth good before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, either forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. We don't have to worry about rejection. God takes care of all of that. We do what we're supposed to do. And then God will take care of the rest of it. Okay, now the first one was what? Faith. 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 Second one? Obedience. Obedience. What's the third one? Rejection. Rejection. Okay, we have three of them. We have two more to go. So the next one is compassion. We have to have compassion for the lost. We have to have compassion for those that are hopeless, like the man that you saw in, on the screen. He, he, you could just look in their eyes and see they have no hope of ever having anything any better. I'm going to scratch through trash for the rest of my life. That's not true. Oh, uh, uh, com compassion. Uh, we as Christians need to have the compassion that we can help those people, that we can win them to the Lord. Sure, he may have to scratch through trash, but you know what? When he dies, if his, if his soul is not saved, if he has not accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior, he still has no hope. He, his hope is gone. And that's for eternity. That's not just for a lifespan of 50, 60, 70 years. That is an eternity. I, sometimes I feel like that we, as we get older, we forget about eternity. And we all, we as Christians here this morning, we're looking. We're just waiting. I'm waiting for the eastern sky to bust open and, and we all go home. But until we do, we have to have compassion for the lost. We have to have compassion for people. So now, what is the first one? Faith, obedience, rejection, compassion, 
compassion. The last one is endurance. Endurance. Sometimes when we're going along and we, we think everything is doing it, we do everything is great, it's just easy. And, and, and it's not. And, and we run into problems, we don't endure. We have to endure those things that God wants us to endure. Why? Because He's growing us. He knows what it takes in our life. He knows what it takes in the pastor's life. He knows what it takes in every one of your life to make you what He wants you to be. So He has He He builds that into us to endure, endure to the end. In Hebrews 12 and 14, it says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross he endured Jesus endured the cross he despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the father now you see what endurance did endurance put Jesus Christ right at the right hand of the father because he endured what if he would have given up we know that would have been impossible because God was not going to let him give up. But what if he not in had what if he had not endured the cross like that it was meant to be? Where would our salvation be? So I'm just asking you to remember those things. What? Faith? Oh. Endurance. Amen. So now, when Satan puts doubts in your mind, remember these five things. And don't let Satan control you and defeat you. You can endure, you can, you can start with the faith and go all the way through to endurance. Because you will endure. And it will be rewarding in the end. Brother Pastor, thank you.